Over to you, Prashant. Check, check. Uh, thanks very much uh, for that. Uh, so where should we start? You know, uh, when we said, can AI uplift Bharat, I thought, uh, the, you know, uh, top down when we think from uh, 30,000 feet, the big problems of Bharat, rural India, are uh, jobs, uh, healthcare, education, and access to capital, finance. I think these are, uh, I mean, there of course are, there can be many more and we can uh, go down the list later, but these are the basic fundamental problems or uh, sort of, you know, lack of which are there, which needs to be solved. And the question we are asking is, can AI, uh, th these new technologies help to get a lot of this faster in a much more efficient way uh, to Bharat? Uh, so let me, <clears throat> let me uh, start by asking our esteemed panelists that exact question. To your mind, if I can start with you, uh, Manu, what, what, out of these four, right, you're focused on the jobs piece, uh, but, but weigh in on all of these and how technology is helping to solve these issues. And we can go into each one of them uh, a little later. Go on. Uh, absolutely. So lovely to be here. Uh, I think it feels slightly wrong to be sharing dice with one of my favorite people in the world. Uh, I think goes without saying everyone in the room deeply looks up to uh, Prashant sir for I think the ecosystem that you've built here. So number one, this is super exciting. Uh, I'm slightly sick, so I'm usually a lot more energetic than I think I'll come out in this presentation. Uh, but uh, I think the question at hand is very important. AI represents a fundamental technological shift. And I think the last one we saw was the internet, right? And I mean, I, everywhere I go, I talk about this paper Wind Surf wrote in late 1990s, talking about how the internet will create this end of information asymmetry. Right, that the age of you knowing more than me knowing, than, than I know because of where we live is over. I think 30 years since he wrote that, that hasn't panned out, right? Even today, three billion people have no access to the internet, like zero, and most of the world has intermittent access to the internet. So when I think about AI, and I think about it uplifting Bharat, the first thing that I think is very important is we cannot make that same mistake with AI. We simply cannot afford to repeat that same situation, right? So from day one, we have to think about how AI solutions that we build will serve everyone, not just the few that, you know, live in, uh, as, as Sajid Pai calls it, India One or India One Alpha, right? I think that's very, very important. I think what we are doing at Karya is using AI to build livelihoods for rural communities. Uh, the AI sector has created a lot of new jobs that didn't exist before. Our goal is to train rural communities to do that work. Uh, I think we will see a transformative shift in the kind of livelihood opportunities that will be available for people. And I think that will also create knock-on effects on ways we educate our communities, ways we provide healthcare, better healthcare outcomes to them, the way we give them access to financial literacy and stuff like that. So I think, I think very exciting times ahead. And I think um, from where we sit at Karya, we see a very, very optimistic picture of the future, which is that this could truly be uh, a giant enabler in bringing opportunities that haven't come in the past. Um, yeah. You know, Manu, for the uninitiated, right, somebody looking from the outside, uh, when we talk Bharat, we are talking about low literacy levels, we're talking about uh, access to all of these things being uh, much lower than uh, sort of uh, urban centers, etc. And then we throw in the word artificial intelligence and what can it, it can do, and you know, people are thrown back, well, how do, how do, but we're talking about using this to solve many of these problems. And I think that is right. what is remarkable. And, and, and also, I mean, like a mindset shift, right? Talent is equally distributed. Opportunity is not. Just because someone might be low income or low digital literacy doesn't mean that they do not already possess the talent to build AI models, right? So when we started our work, we started as a research project in 2017 in Microsoft Research. The first question we asked was, can communities in rural India do complex, high-paying digital tasks on their smartphones without being explicitly skilled for it? Six years into this journey, that question sounds funny. Of course they can. Like, why is that ever, why was that ever doubted? But that was a question, right? And uh, what we do is just to put some, like, you know, like give, me, give you a real example. Um, we heard from uh, Mr. Amitabh Nag uh, earlier today, who was talking about Bhashini, right? So Bhashini is open sourcing these incredible data sets, building the building blocks for building AI in Indic languages. We employ communities in rural India who sit at their home and read out sentences in their mother tongue, right? So they literally have, the, you know, 78% of rural Indians now have a smartphone. 
they just read out sentences in their mother tongue and they make nearly 20 times the Indian minimum wage for doing that work because that is the fair price for that data set, right? So that's an entirely new form of work that wasn't there a few years ago, right? And I think rural Indians can both create incredible AI and can also be served by incredible AI and it's our responsibility to do both of those things. Yeah. Uh, Prashant, if we can come to you. Yeah. Manu here has built a remarkable right. AI uh, company out of India. But as, a f as one of the foremost investors, uh, right, venture capital growth uh, sort of investors, uh, how do you see how, how companies and the ecosystem is geared towards solving some of these problems that we spoke about for Bharat? Yeah, so uh, let me kind of frame it a little bit in terms of, you know, where we are after 75 years, right? After 75 years, like Manu was saying, whether it's in our quality of healthcare, quality of education, uh, ability to provide livelihoods for people who are educated uh, and, and can be contributing citizens, I think we are still not come a long way, right? So we have, uh, and we don't have another 75 years. So you, in the next 25 years, you got to achieve what we couldn't achieve in 75 years. And while internet was one big promise, and it has, of course, delivered on some of it, I think you need uh, a, a combination of uh, next level of disruptive thinking. And that disruptive thinking is not, like Manu said, it's about also leveraging our capability to be integrated and serve the rest of the world's uh, progression towards a digital world, mm. or an AI world. So, it's, uh, so I think the, the, the aspect that we really need to uh, kind of keep in mind is, uh, you know, one is while we consume for ourselves and while we serve AI to solve for um, uh, healthcare, education, we also need to figure out how do we participate in this whole global digital AI transformation. And I, that's where I like what Manu is doing. It's a good example of uh, how you can, pill, uh, you can pull m millions of people out of uh, otherwise would have either migrated to the city and would be doing very menial jobs or would be in rural areas and would, would not be productive, right? So I think um, we, to solve uh, AI for Bharat, I think both are important is what I'm emphasizing. That your ability to find more Karya-like models for us to be able to serve this global transformation that's happening and participate and second is uh, in healthcare, in education, uh, in agri-tech, uh, in a lot of these areas where uh, there is a lack of, there's information asymmetry still and there are interfaces that are not intuitive mm. and are still, uh, you know, not at a place where people can without, uh, without you know, with, with, with low friction consume, I think there's still a lot of work to be done there. Uh, are you seeing uh, all the companies gearing up? Or Very much. Not I, in, think, yeah. uh, I think, um, you know, let me look at um, uh, education, right? Uh, in education, hyper-personalization, because that's what you need, because when, if the, if the platform is not hyper-personalized, it's going to carry over your urban student learning model to somebody in a rural setting, which is going to be just, you know, 180 degrees different, right? So how is that hyper-personalization and uh, Ari Vihan, there's a, there's a dot AI is a platform. Uh, we have rocket learning, which both of us know very well, where they're applying uh, uh, a chatbot uh, kind of model to uh, um, early childhood learning, uh, where parents can uh, participate along with the child. But in the, local languages? In, in local languages, okay. in local languages. And, uh, you know, capacity building for teachers. I think teachers uh, today uh, need to, you know, be able to, um, you know, participate in um, offering some of these capabilities to their children and uh, th there's, th there's some of these platforms being able to do that. In healthcare, I think democratizing healthcare. Sorry, just one minute, on education, is it being done at scale? Where are we in the journey? When we See, I think uh, AI, uh, you would have speak, different speakers would have told you we're still early mm -hmm. in India, right? Uh, we are early because understanding how we can cater to market demand leveraging AI uh, platforms and technologies is still a discovery iterative process. Mm -hmm. I think we are in the first six months of that. 
we also have a challenge where the economic model of it, uh, till we figure out uh, uh, you know, models that can serve, uh, say I can have um, a test prep model that is built on chat GPT uh, deployed in uh, rural India, but if the cost of that is unviable, is I can't take it to uh, population scale, right, outside of urban India. So how do we do that? So some of the Indian model work that's happening, because the first generation of these models had no cap in terms of what you could spend. And I think in the US, the use of these models also have no cap in terms of the economic model today. They're being funded by VCs, like in the early days, uh, and uh, there is no viable uh, model yet. But we can't just bring it to India now and say we're going to deploy it uh, because it democratizes something, whether it's healthcare, education in rural India, and have no economic model for it, or have a cost of serving a, a token or a serving a query be like 10 rupees or 15 rupees. Mm. It's just not viable. Mm. So I think we are in very early formative days. I'm more talking about the promise of some of this, and I don't want to give an indication that some of it is already at deployment scale. Mm. So, but what I have confidence is, is after what we have gone through in terms of learning what it is to build frugal startups and all the excesses of the last two years, I think this generation of uh, entrepreneurs will be more uh, mindful that what they build uh, with, with these AI models um, has to make economic sense. And I don't think VCs are willing to also overlook the long-term viability. There could be a short-term uh, you know, model building phase where you will fund it, right? But the long-term viability of these models has to be very clear. Otherwise, the ed tech problems that we have had, in, you can't just replicate it again with AI. Then you've not learned anything. With ed tech, you would agree the, prop, the ideas were good. The problem perhaps was just overreach and in terms of no, no cap on I, funding, etc. No, 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 no. I think with ed tech, I think it was, uh, it was a COVID extrapolation of the need on one dimension. Second dimension is not understanding the Indian parent of what they are willing to pay for. They are willing to pay for where the change, uh, I mean, or the meaning of that particular uh, phase of use of ed tech is, is going to be life changing for their kid. First to eighth grade, I don't think it really changed anything for them, right? You're going to replace one tuition teacher with another, AI, with another AI or a online tuition teacher. It's not going to materially change anything. But if I am looking at test prep or a government job or any of these areas, then so I think we, we did not have product fit in terms of where parents were willing to pay for ed tech and where our entrepreneurs thought uh, there. And, and, and the new stuff which is coming, it's all Kate, uh, in education is... Uh, I think it will still, it'll, even in rural India, it will all be catered to 9th to 12th. Okay. And all, all kinds of test prep. Test prep, uh, I think... As you say, the phase where it makes a... It's, a it's big going to change their lives. Okay. You want to add to that, Manu? Any, any, any thoughts? You, you, uh, uh, Prashant mentioned a company that both of you know very well. Rocket, rocket Learning. Right. It was. Right. You can right. talk about Rocket Learning. I love Rocket Learning. I don't know how much I should talk about it. But, you know, I think, I think the amount of good work that's happening is incredible, right? And I think that, um, you know, what, uh, what Utsav and team are doing at Rocket Learning, uh, what Amrita uh, Mahale, who is the CTO at Arman, she's building a large language model to train um, healthcare workers to treat high-risk pregnancies in local Indian languages, right? Uh, we just finished building a model with uh, the folks at KHPT, a lovely nonprofit here in Karnataka, Karnataka Health Promotion Trust. Their mandate is to tackle tuberculosis, right? And they used to have these books and maintain a call center for people to ask questions about their TB diagnosis, right? So they reached out to us to say, can you build a chatbot where a TB patient can just ask, will I get better? What medicines should I take? Uh, where should I go? Like your basic questions. And to build that model, we employed tuberculosis <laughs> patients. We employed over a thousand of them, uh, brought critical supplementary income to them to, for them to fine tune a model, then built that app for them, which is now serves them, right? And, and it's all set to serve uh, a million plus TB patients in the state, right? So I think you will see some transformative outcomes, right? And I think the way to think about AI, the way I like thinking about AI is 
of it as a 100x solution, right? Because it has the power to bypass a lot of societal issues we've been uh, tackling. And here's a, there's a story that's coming to my mind that I've never said in public, but I would love to share. Um, we've been doing this for six years. We knock doors when we go to villages. Uh, I get to do less of it because Jeevita Ma'am, who's our director of operations, now does all of this for me. But, but back in the early days, where it was just my co-founder and I, we would knock doors. And we found ourselves in rural Rajasthan, in, in, in one of the, well, in, in the most economically constrained district in the state. And this man opened the door, and I don't lose my temper easily. And I said, hey, we have a, a job, uh, and it would be for your wife, because this is for women in the, in the community. Can I please meet your wife? And she said, he said in the most crass Hindi possible, my wife doesn't work, right? And, and I lost my temper and, and retorted back and was allowed to then uh, see his wife. Uh, and his last words to me was, you can try giving her a job, she can't do it, she's useless, right? Which is, oh. Uh, and I told her what the job was, which was recording sentences in Marwari and building a language model in Marwari. In her two weeks doing the work, she made a little over 15,000 rupees, which was more money than he had made all of last year, right? So the story gets better. The next time we went to her house, she opened the door, not him, and she was sitting on the sofa, which I love, and both legs up, uh, and she was still doing karya work. And when I came in, she turned to him and said, chai bana kya, right? And, and he was in the kitchen making chai, right? <laughs> I'm not trying to suggest that we change someone's patriarchal mindsets in two weeks, that's not possible, right? But who you build for, who you give power to, who you give wealth to changes things, right? And AI can help us in that journey, right? Which is we can change and, and we, we can be more equitable, is what I'm trying to say, right? We need to help work with everyone, right? Uh, and I think across education, right? So what Rocket Learning is do doing is transformative because they're working with communities we haven't been able to serve before. They're a nonprofit, so amazing people like Prashant sir fund them uh, to allow them to reach to places where the market hasn't been able to reach, right? Um, if I look at what Arman is doing with healthcare, it's the same thing. They're, they're supporting communities that haven't been supported before, right? And the goal should be to create agency of these communities so they get to a point where they don't need our support, right? They should get to a point where they're now wealthy enough to participate in the market. And we, st we have started seeing, I think, healthy sprouts of that. And I think that's exciting with AI, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, healthcare, I believe, is where you'll see more earlier value mm. than even education in rural settings. Um, it's uh, what you will see with radiology and then some of the areas like TB that he was talking about. I think the whole co-pilot model uh, for a rural worker and new interfaces that you will see. I, I think the problem with the first gen, whether it is non-voice or whatever the models that have been for, uh, for in the case of an agri, uh, uh, a farmer in a village, right? For them, I think Google is still intimidating, right? So it's not easy for them to get a real solution uh, and, and I think they, they just have to go through a huge learning process to distill information and uh, synthesize what they get out of the current interfaces. So I think one transformative change that you will see is entirely new interfaces which will increase adoption uh, both in areas such as healthcare uh, where the value is high. I mean just one uh, query in a difficult situation by a doctor or a farmer is, even if it costs 10, 15, 20 rupees for that query, it's still high value. So I think that will probably, you, you, you'll see a lot more of that very early. And uh, uh, some of it may be initially grant funded, right? So, uh, because in, there's a lot of uh, philanthropy and, uh, yeah. so I think early AI adoption in Bharat may require a little bit of philanthropic support. Mm and uh, grant-based uh, funding is my conjecture, right? So it might not all come as profit models, but your value of philanthropic money, the leverage on that could be multifold. And you could actually be building uh, what we all talk about as bold philanthropy, where the underlying model that you're building uh, itself is uh, high value, and uh, you're really changing things much faster than if, if, you hadn't, if you had done it the old-fashioned way. So this is this whole NGO 2.0 kind of 
kind of models. Yeah. I mean, I was reading, uh, the, uh, Mr. N Mr. Nandan Likani had put, uh, written a piece recently, I mean, I think the 6th or 7th of December, where uh, he's got an NGO, AI, AI Bharat, I think, and uh, uh, AI for Bharat, for Bharat, which basically, and he gave an example that the PM Kisan site, they had introduced a chatbot, and the first day, I think there were some 500,000 uh, sort of queries from farmers, which, so what you meant, uh, Prashant, were, were, so when you said Google is still intimidating for people, so it moves on to local languages, I mean, no, basically no, it's, just it's a, not only local yeah. languages, see if you, I mean, everybody here is use chat GPT, right? You get to your end, what do I do, much faster, with uh, uh, this new paradigm or this new interface. I think that we should not underestimate. Mm. It's, it's just uh, uh, a very different way of uh, me getting my solution, uh, um, if, even with a, a lot less literacy uh, in my ability to query, I think is very powerful. You know, the other area, <coughs> before, briefly, and we'll come, get back to some of the other issues, is finance, access to capital, access to finance. And when we speak with banks, NBFCs, everybody is on the AI bandwagon. You know, they're all leveraging AI to lend new models, uh, fintech, uh, you know, customer behavior, credit behavior, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Manu, you, you, uh, you, you wanted. To, we were talking about this earlier. Uh, is this also going? Perhaps could be a game changer, or uh, how do you think about it? Yeah, no, absolutely. We just wrapped up an exciting project on financial literacy uh, with the incredible folks at Parinam Foundation, which is uh, Ujjivan Bank's uh, foundation, and 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 folks here at Microsoft Research. And I think we are again seeing very early signs of transformative financial outcomes for our workers. Right. In our case, we are giving our workers um, significant amounts of critical supplementary income, and we want them to have high levels of financial literacy, right? So we have started seeing, I think, some healthy sprouts of that, uh, which, is, which is very exciting also, right? We see that they are able to, they make, on average, we have a paper coming out about this, I don't want to spoil the paper, but we have like, a, we see 40% increase in people's financial abilities to save better and stuff like that. And I think that is a very exciting start again, right? If we can, if we can bridge the information asymmetry gap that exists between what we know uh, and what, what our communities are now receiving uh, sums of money, you know, that could also be a game, game changer, yeah. And I'm sure Prashant has yeah, more think, to add uh, No, this is, uh, again, a very high value use case, right? So for somebody who uh, does not understand how to save, does not understand what should be their financial planning model, I think uh, there's uh, a, a faster path to literacy, I think, with these uh, uh, new uh, uh, interfaces and uh, um, leverage of uh, content uh, in, in a more personalized manner, which has not been possible before. And so while you, you're serving a lot of this in rural India, I don't think they have the capability to absorb it in the current form that it is being served. So like Manu was saying, uh, I think how we are serving some of these applications and how we are um, customizing uh, the ability for them to absorb and utilize these applications is, I think, the bigger problem that we got to solve for Bharat. Mm. Uh, I'm sure, Prashant, you see so many pitches made to you, uh, AI companies coming, asking for money. Where are you seeing the most amount of, which is, which is the most viable, uh, I think you said healthcare perhaps will bloom before, AI in healthcare will bloom before it does, an edu does so in education. But, uh, which are the which are the sectors subsectors where you're seeing the most amount of activity happening? See, I think right now uh, there's a lot of effort on building custom uh, models with custom data, right? Uh, proprietary data, and I think the value of those models are all to build co-pilots. There are, um, and the idea there is if you build a for a professional vertical, it could be for the health domain, the legal domain. The idea there is that if you build um, a custom model, that can be leveraged globally, and uh, the value of that custom model is something that is translatable to a good. Value so in a way, it's building uh, building here, but for the but for, for, the, for the, the U.S. or wherever, it's not for wherever. Okay. But I'm saying that it can also, uh, you know, like I said, initially a lot of venture funding will not go into funding these for the rural, and this is where I said you need philanthropy, you need grant funding to then take this model, which is what is happening in, uh, which is what is happening in rocket learning, right? Mm -hmm. You take a, 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 what is otherwise built for urban India, built for the global um, use case, but somebody will uh, give you 
capital to adapt it to fine Bharat tune it. and fine tune it for Bharat and hopefully um, build over a period of time a viable model there for uh, even Bharat use case but upfront leveraging that and thinking that you're going to build a, uh, a AI business for fundable business for Bharat I think we are a little bit times away from that. But hopefully not too far away. Uh, not too far away, bridges. but let's build for <laughs> the world and then hopefully we adapt it for it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, those, by the way, were marching orders. So uh, we're going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much, both of you, Thank for you a so very much. enjoyable Thank conversation. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chopra and Mr. Prakash, for widening our perspectives about how AI can uplift Bharat.